This is Clean Radio. Welcome everybody out there listening to Clean Radio, a show about addiction and recovery and everything in the middle. In studio tonight, of course, my co-host with the most. And I, I think I'm the middle. Um, you are the middle. <laughs> and um, and uh, I think most of us, you know, fall in the middle. And uh, there's, there's the middle. So let's welcome everybody out there. Um, you know, uh, it's... Uh, yeah, let's welcome everybody out there. We have a great show for you tonight. We have an amazing guest. Um, we'll get to him in a second, but he's in some of the greatest movies of all time, and he's one of my favorite movies of all time, The Deer Hunter. That's actor John Savage. Um, and I know he's for sure in that movie. <laughs> As opposed to past guests when I might have said he was in a different type of TV show than he was. Um, so I'd like to welcome everybody out there. Um, you know, go to facebook.com slash clean radio. We have this amazing interaction with fans. And, uh, and it's really cool because we get these private messages from people because there are a lot of people out there that are sometimes scared to talk about this out loud. And we get it. This is a scary topic to talk about sobriety and mental health out loud. So please go there and look at it. And post. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, you know, people can email us directly, yeah. too. We get a lot of emails during the week, and it's nice to interact with people that are out there and um, have one-to-one -one dialogue with them. So so one of the things I actually wanted to talk about tonight, and uh, this is a story. I've read it a couple of days ago. It says, expert, you know, ex uh, selfie addiction may cause mental illness. <laughs> and um, what's amazing is that I didn't even know how to, you know. You didn't even know ago, how to do a selfie. How to do a selfie. Yeah. I understood you point the cat whatever it is but i didn't know some people were actually looking in the mirror taking which is like doubly i think some people probably don't even know what selfies are yet yeah well right? no, i'm pretty sure a lot of people I think everybody knows especially because obama had it last week at the baseball game or at the oh, white it's house become like David a pop Ortiz. popular culture thing now yeah, like, i think selfies is um, i thought it was still sort of in the closet no oh, i wish it would go back <laughs> and um but it's this weird thing about people i don't get it and they're saying it's causing mental illness and my question to you is wouldn't you say it's the mental illness that's causing people to be to you know wanting to take these selfies yeah well to... you know um it's a sign of narcissism and and generally people that have a narcissistic personality and become obsessive about things like taking I selfies think you and... just hit the, hit the nail on the head and that's john yeah. savage, john agreeing, savage with agreeing with me that's and great john savage obsessive, agrees with you obsessive thinking and uh what is it physical addiction yeah yeah, yeah. Well, it's a compulsive behavior too, and it's they're trying to. A lot of it then can stem into, or you can also have if you have a lot of narcissism, something called body dysmorphic disorder, which is where in your brain your image of yourself doesn't match what you see when people take a picture of you or when you look in the mirror, and it can cause really severe depression. And there's high rates of suicide with people that have this this form of mental disorder where they they can't they they don't feel like they look the way they should. What did you call that? It's called body dysmorphic disorder. That's what I have. Yeah? That's why I do what I do, I think. Um, see, I'm diagnosing people on the air now. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody... I want to pretend. I don't want to be me. Yeah, you don't no, want to be you. Yeah, you want to be something else. The acceptance is uh, the answer to all our problems. Or whatever. The, yeah. the issue of mental health, you know, being mentally ill is like, oh, 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 poof, scary. What does that mean? But mental health is, I think, it for everybody. It's a constant uh, that we can really benefit from you know checking our whatever works for us to kind of be a little less yeah you know, you know i'm not obsessed like, about anything yeah, i'm not a big fan of labels and diagnoses like in, in a lot of patients especially when i worked more just in acute care psychiatric hospitals um than in rehabs and the work that i do now but um a lot of people would adopt their diagnosis so uh -huh. it was very i thought dangerous to actually even let people know what they were diagnosed with often because they would then go, you know, look up what that was, and then they would start adopting the characteristics, or they'd say, oh, because I have borderline personality disorder, it's okay for me to, like, you know, try and stab my spouse, right? So, you know, well, that, that's a that's, normal behavior for me that's an, because that's, of my mental illness. Yeah. <laughs> but that's in those diagno diagnosed, uh, literally diagnosed mental illness, right. whether it's brain disorder. We, I like the word disorder. Especially because I got a lot of people I'm close to with disorders, and they're really incredible people. Yeah. You know, they're doing courageous things. Like I see a lot of people in recovery. It's like for me, the military was as a service. You go in, you, you you're there for the for the to work with other people, and maybe even to be trained how to do that, and uh, you're there for them to help them in a way in situations that you're being trained to deal with 
and then when you get out now what do you do but you right. know how do you do that with life and uh one of the best things i found in you know recovery is uh that i'm working with people that it's better for us to work together than be by ourselves and it's for me the toughest thing in the world i don't want to be with people <laughs> i'm afraid of them i don't want to yeah. oh but i really fall in love with every girl i meet and supposedly you found somebody that's beautiful that you know i have never lost it's called I, well i think it's never called larry flint lost. syndrome <laughs> yeah the most beautiful girl in the world uh, she's gonna be here too and if you just tuned in you're listening to clean radio that of course is john savage star of everything um you've been you have a lot of credits to your name and you were one of my favorite movies, one of the most influential movies, I think, in the 1970s, which was Deer Hunter. Right. Yeah. And uh, which has had the true. scariest scene in any movie ever, which is the Russian roulette scene. Right. And um, thank God I'm getting the right movie. Um, <laughs> but, you know, and, but one of the reasons I wanted to talk, I want to hear from people, actually, because, you know, I think one of the cool things that we're, we could get to do with this show is actually talk to people that might take selfies. And right. they might disagree. You know, we get pot smokers that often call us up saying it does them no harm. Yeah. They tell us very slowly, but <laughs> they tell us. And I want to hear from... They have from, to set an alarm clock to and get yes, up. That's and, exactly right. But I actually want to hear, if you're out there, give us a call. The number is 800-222-5222. That's 800-222-5222. What is it that you get from a selfie? What is it? Yeah. I, I don't get it. I mean, even, and hopefully you could explain to me. I mean, also, it's also connected to a lot of compulsive sex and, you know, people that are out there. Maybe just, that's why I don't get it, because I get no. As, yeah. Yeah, you, <laughs> 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 Maybe you should do more selfies. Yeah, exactly. yeah, really. I'm thinking uh, <laughs> that's I didn't the first see anything step. wrong with that, right? <laughs> I, <got cool. laughs> I don't know. What is a what is a healthy quota for, of sex, do you think? I guess it's, I, you're asking the wrong person. It's about person, non-risky right? behavior, you're actually. You're a single person right now it's so about containing i don't know, yeah, don't know. <laughs> um ask me when i'm yes anyways um so we're in the studio <laughs> with john savage but, and you've been sober quite a long time i don't know i think so <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's different different levels and areas of sobriety I, I don't drink i don't take drugs and all that stuff but i still have various you know of whoops you know picadillos um, as we just call went them into a rage and said mm. things that i wished i hadn't said and all that stuff uh, so sober thinking is, is something I gotta, I don't think I'll ever get cured of uh, whatever it is that I have with that. But I do feel, at times, I feel a lot better with, you know, how I can be a little less uh, compulsive or whatever. The roles that you've played in movies over the years, though, have been just extremely impressive. I mean, you're an amazing actor, first mm -hmm. of all, but they're, they're very emotional roles. I mean, almost every role I've seen you play, you push an envelope of expression, and it's normally some sort of painful uh, type of character. Is that something that you got typecast in, or do you think that you really Look at my you face. grabbed it? <laughs> <laughs> Look at my face. <laughs> <laughs> my face is like, when I really feel great, it's like people come up to me and they say, what's the matter with you? Really? Oh, are you okay? My face naturally kind of goes down. Yeah. And I'm like from an old Dutch heritage or right. everybody who's kind of like really looks like they're depressed all the time. <laughs> We're real heavy drinker culture. Sure. Like Absolutely. Other, other friends of mine in the whatever it's called, that that uh, Anglo-Saxon thing, whatever thing. <laughs> but the, uh, the, you know, the, the drinking part and other stuff like that, um, we get self, you know, we can become self-aware. What, to a point where it's not just self-aware, it's obsessive thinking about myself. Oh my God, I'm not good enough. Oh my God, I'm too good for this. I don't need these people. Oh my God, what am I doing here? I need something more important. I'm gonna go buy my. I'm gonna go be alone, where I'm really important and be okay. just fine. And I, I'm sure you get like way too many questions about the deer hunter, and it was a long time ago, and you've done a lot more recently. But what when was it, that film about? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what I want to bring up. A lot of people thought the deer hunter was really about Vietnam, but for me, it was really about family and about the relationships between people that live in a community, and and how you maintain bonds and how people grow and support each other. And the scene with you is that Russian blood scene. The I mean, the, I remember seeing that movie when I was younger. And for the first time, and just being shocked by your performance of it just being so real and so overly emotional. It was um, such a great opportunity to work with such great people. And when I 
was aware that we all came with something. We came to the film with just something that meant something. It was our something personal to everybody. And uh, what you did know. you think about them playing "God Bless America" at the end of the film? <laughs> 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 I uh, I was really moved, and I, I did some humor. Is I I'm uh, I I was involved with kids as a kid uh, because of my own. I had uh, some disorders and disease. You know, I had some things I grew out of, right. and I was involved with people with polio and uh, other areas of uh, you know physical disorder, mm -hmm. and. Uh, <laughs> Just, just the foot, you know, <laughs> falling down right. every once in a while. And just the courage of a lot of young people that I can see today going through things so well when they've got disabilities or disorders or mental or physical. And the humor involved with themselves, that they can laugh at themselves and joke with each other and really look at the, the rest of the world with a very, what's the word, uh, very a wise kind of observant, you know, you know how foolish we can be about stuff, just out of the mouths of children sometimes. And I played with that. Mm -hmm. That I, I, you know, I had I had been in VA hospitals as a kid. My dad was in the, in the Corps in Guadalcanal, lost his squad, six foot six, wow. calmest, quietest guy in the world, unless. You threatened him. You threatened his family, or any, he felt you were threatening someone. He killed you. Boom. Mm -hmm. But just the, the that reaction from the experience of being a tough young guy, and then like 17, 18, being in the Marine Corps in the middle of you know losing his whole squad. And I saw pictures of those guys. He had an album that he saved from someone who was killed, who had no family. He said most of those guys they didn't have anything else, and uh, they were young. Oh. So he kept the album under lock and key, along mm. with medals and other stuff. Nobody was supposed to touch that. And I got into it as a kid once. And I remember him just standing in the doorway, shaking his head like... You don't, don't want to open that book. <laughs> do that again. But I looked at the whole book, and yeah. he, he had nightmares. You know, he, had, he cried some nights in his sleep. He yelled. Do you think that affected you? Do you think that... Totally. Like, how did that change your character, do you think? Well, his dad... Mm -hmm. My mom and her mom got got them when I was very young to go get him off the Bowery because he had served as a little boy running the spot for, for Roosevelt in Cuba. Wow. And then First World War was gassed and lost like 400, 500 men from his platoon wow. in France. And he, his culture was drink. Hmm. And, uh, you know, so was my dad. My dad, he could handle it you know he put away alcohol and very quiet just nod you know and that to me and my grandpa too when he his kids all came back alive from the second world war he, he and they all were doing okay uh, he said okay and his his wife had left him years earlier for someone who had money so there's like there's a lot of veterans out there listening right now, and we know that there's a really high suicide rate right now with um, with uh, with soldiers and people serving in the military. There's also severe problems with depression um, and uh, post traumatic stress disorder. Um, but it's the suicide rate that disturbs me the most because um, it seems like clearly we know these people are coming back with severe trauma and issues, and they try to use alcohol and other drugs. I think a lot of them, and a lot of them get hooked on in the military because. It's a culture of drinking and taking that's, Ambien. That's and changed in some places. I know the Navy has uh, AA meetings on ship, on board. Really? And, uh, I mean, uh, yeah, and uh, huh. there's a lot of alternative behavior. But, uh, you know, s psychological stress now with young people is up, too. And, and if you just tuned in, sorry, you're listening to Clean Radio. You're listening to John Savage, also Andrew Spanswick. Give us a call. The number is 800-222-5222. It's 800-222-5222. You know, you're talking about something, I mean, you know, you're right. We have a lot of veterans that are listening to the show. We have a lot of people, a lot of people listening to the show, and we're talking about PTSD coming back, and the suicide rate is up. And, and alcoholism and alcoholism drug abuse. Alcoholism and all these things. And it's really cool to hear that in the Navy, they actually have 12-step meetings on the ships. And But what is it that we're not doing? What is it that we're... Is it still too taboo for a guy that comes back from the service that, you know, to say, I don't know what to do? 
Well, let me let me skip this to another level of this, a different perspective really quick, because I think it's putting too much pressure on one area, which is prevalent in everybody. Uh, we're powerless over 10 years of war. And I don't care who you are. Everybody's affected. Yeah. Everybody. That's, it's, it's, it's not explainable. It's something we can't change. It's just, it's, it's going to happen. You know, it's like, uh, God, God, what is it? You know, the world could right now, sh- it shakes under our feet here in Los Angeles. And it's, oh, it's fun. <laughs> you ever been in a big one? It, you know, you get a big quake going and it's, you can't get out of it. You can't walk. You can't move. You can't do anything. That emotional kind of earthquake stuff that goes on in people and human beings, uh, we all need help. Yeah. We need help sometimes, and that help is hard to figure out how to accept and how, how do we do that. Sometimes the simplest thing, saying hello. Listening. Yeah. Not trying Having to, compassion. Not trying to preach to people, yeah. you know. Yeah, people, but, it's listening. I think, I think that people are social beings. I mean, we, are, we need to be around other people. We need to communicate. But nobody really teaches people how to listen. Especially anymore when you don't really need to. Yeah, you, you know, can just... It, it, we've, we've, just about everything on right. Facebook and it's, think people are listening. It's a generation <laughs> of people that don't need to that don't need to listen. It, it's 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 everything is non face to face. Or if and they're listening, they're texting and while they're listening. Everybody's different. Yeah. Everybody's different. I can I say like that some, you say that. By the yeah. way, I think it's so important that you just said that because I say that to people a lot. Because a lot of times you hear people say we're not unique, you know, and especially in the twelve step world. And I say your addiction's not unique, but you're unique. Uh. You know, you're unique. And, and the goal, I think, sometimes, you know, is, is expressing your own uniqueness and is being who you are. And I think that's very important. Let's go to a phone call because he's been waiting a while. Let's go to Eric in uh, Mission Viejo. Welcome to Clean Radio, Eric. Hey, Judah. Hey, Andrew. How are you guys doing? Good. Good. How, are how are you doing? doing? And John Savage. Hey, and John Savage. Don't forget him. <laughs> hey, John. How are you doing? I'm all right, Eric. Hi. Good. Well, I just wanted to call you guys and thank you so much uh, for your show. I've been listening for about three months now, and today I wanted to call in because I'm celebrating six months of sobriety today. So. That's amazing. Oh, congratulations. Yay. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, just wanted to call in and share your guys' message of hope, you know. So, Why don't you tell us how you did it, Eric? Well, you know, for the first time in my life, I've honestly gotten down and gotten dirty and gotten honest. You know, that's, that's really it. So I'm working a really solid program right now. I've got a great sponsor. I'm doing the steps. I'm finally doing it right for the first time. So You sound like a drill instructor in a Marine Corps just now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's great. Yeah. I mean, and it's six months later. I mean, that's great. I mean, how old are you? I'm 25. See, I love that because wow. you know how many people, how, how long were you struggling for? Honestly, it's been about seven years. I know I've been listening, and you say that the average addict takes about seven years to finally get help, and it pretty much took me about seven years. So. And the reason I ask you how old you are and how long it took is because we have a lot of call. We have a lot of listeners that they, they have issues with their kids, and you well, know a lot of people don't believe you can actually be an addict at that young. Yeah. And we found now that more and more people now are finally realizing yeah. that you can actually stop the process of addiction. Um, from affecting you and ruining a lot of your life at a much earlier age. Uh, and unfortunately, in the past, a lot of people believe that you had to like completely bottom out by the age of like 40 or whatever yeah. before you got help. But we now know that you can actually intervene you mean, early. You mean that's not what you're supposed to do? <laughs> <laughs> so, oh. Eric, Eric that, I mean, I, I just really want to say congratulations. It, it, you know, you're helping a lot of people out there by calling in and telling your that's story. That's true. Yep. Well, I appreciate it, guys, and I want to say thank you so much for your show. You know, I'm, not, I'm a big time listener now. I tune in every weekend. I've been going back and listening to all your all your videos on YouTube, and I, I've gotten a lot of a lot of help from the show. So, and I know it's helping a lot of people out there. So, thank you, Andrew. Thank you, Judah. Thank you guys very much. Really thank you, Eric. thank you, Eric. And the check is in the mail. You're, right? you're doing <laughs> you're doing the thing, and yeah. what you oh, just who you are is contributing. Yeah. More than you realize. Yeah. Just be yourself and stick with it. Man. Be unique. Yeah. Absolutely. And to anybody out there that's struggling, I mean, it's totally possible. Six months ago, I was right there. I didn't think, you know, I couldn't get a week of sobriety. You know, I just couldn't do it. And find, you know, it, hope is out there. It's possible. So. Thank yeah. you very much, Eric. And don't judge to... yourself. You know, that's a, that's a tricky, tricky, tricky thing. And yeah. call back anytime. Okay. Thanks so much, guys. Have a great evening. You too. Thank, Thank you. Care.
Um, and let's get to that was Eric, by the way, from Mission Viejo. Let's get to what John just said because I, I about not judging yourself, Andrew, because you're very big on this about. You know, we love sobriety and we love the idea, but, it, you know, we often talk about not, um, you know, we're against numbers sometimes, you know, when people say 90 and 90, you know, or these certain things, because we're setting ourselves up for failure and or potentially or potentially. Well, my thing is, I don't I'm not necessarily opposed to yeah. saying, like, you know, go to 90 yeah. meetings in 90 days or or just try and stay sober for a year or a week or whatever it takes or one day at a time. Um, my whole thing, though, is. Don't set yourself up if you don't achieve that goal to automatically go straight back to where you were. If you do relapse, if you struggle while you're trying to get sober, mm -hmm. um, don't beat yourself up and about, not come back. And not I, come, I right. find this prevalent in a, in a way of thinking that's also going through evolution with the feeling of like even in medical treatment, the difference of people, us and them. I am going to the doctor. Right. The doctor will cure me. You know, no, he won't. <laughs> the the doctor Actually, will be very honest no, with you. Over 80% of illnesses will fix themselves. They wasted so much money and <laughs> yeah. all that training. They yeah. cannot cure you, but they can help you think and act and do things a little differently to get better. You still got maybe you got broken bones, you got to put a cast on. Penicillin oh. has helped Judah several times. Right. Penicillin has helped me a lot. <laughs> it's a family show. Yeah. Um, John, the biggest question I could ask for you tonight is, have you ever taken a selfie? I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> I just, Where are all the selfie takers out there? I you know, know what? I have trouble looking at myself oh. too much. Do you watch, do you watch the movies you're in? Uh, yeah, sometimes because it's a movie, it's a character. Right. Unless I see myself as myself... I used to enjoy looking at the dailies, they call them. You know, yeah, after right, a day yeah. shoot, you look at the net la yesterday's stuff mm -hmm. and get a good laugh. Right. Oh, my God, it was really bad, really right. terrible <laughs> all the time. But we could together look at ourselves and, like, get a, get off on it and laugh. But you start thinking about it too much, and it, it, it really makes you nuts. I mean, you're sort of lucky that you get to do this role sometimes because that's every alcoholic that, that, that's, or a drug addict, that's what they're doing. They're, in a sense, they're living out some sort of bizarre fantasy, you get to do it in movies. You get to act out and, hmm. you know, but one of the things I wanted to ask you about, because I actually posted this. And I thought I was, I, I was getting closer to God. You know, the best drugs in the world, best booze as a kid, uh, raised me to a higher level. And Do you believe that to be, you know, because I, I also got very sick. I actually too. posed that on Facebook. You know, a lot of people think, mm -hmm. and Andrew and I speak about this a lot, about, you know, creativity being somehow linked to drugs and alcohol. Do you find yourself mm -hmm. that you've been more creative since you've been sober? or I, I, I think I have reached the levels of understanding with the work, as we call it. And uh, um, I am really, I've really gotten really um, um, careless, too. So at the same time, it's it's a freedom that I still got to work with, you know. And you're listening to Clean Radio. That's John Savage, Andrew Spanzwick's in studio. We'll be back in a couple seconds. Don't let addiction to drugs or alcohol steal another year of your life. Clean Treatment Center provides world-class addiction assistance that also treats the underlying causes and provides vital aftercare so people can get clean and stay clean. Live, kind, professional help is standing by to provide immediate assistance or to simply answer questions and provide guidance. If you or someone you care about is suffering from addiction, take action now and make 2014 the best year of your life with Clean Treatment Center. Now back to Andrew Spanswick and Judah Friedman. Welcome back to Clean Radio in studio tonight with the amazingly talented John Savage um, and Andrew Spanswick, of course, who's leaving town this week. And, um, you know, I'll be back for next Sunday. But And we're talking so. about selfies tonight. We're talking about self-image, which I, th I think it really comes down to. And you were talking about... Um, I mean, alcoholism, addiction, mental illness. I mean, it, when it comes to self-image, it's a huge thing. Yeah, and all these things aggravate them each other, you know? So if you, let's say you start with addiction and then you develop body dysmorphic disorder or you have body dysmorphic disorder and that leads into obsessive, you know, taking of pictures at the point where you get depressed and suicidal. The, all the, you know, where it starts uh, doesn't necessarily matter. But we do know that if you don't treat 
um, one part of the problem or the first problem, then you end up creating more and more problems. And sometimes when you treat one problem, it pushes into another problem. And that's one of the sort of problems I have with a lot of the theoretical models right now that are out there that we're using for treatment, like cognitive behavioral therapy and didactical behavioral therapy, because even though they're commonly used, they were de- they were created for short-term treatment. They were created to sort of get through an initial problem, mm-hmm. but they don't really give a lot of people the long-term insight that they need to stay healthy or to change and be healthy. Um, and so, you know, like John was saying that, you know, you go to the doctor, but the doctor, you know, is going to give you something, but he's not going to fix the whole problem. You know, a lot of it has to come from the person doing their own work on themselves. And, and that's what I actually liked about even psychoanalytic behavior or, you know, therapy was that it was a longer term progressive, um, looking at your life and figuring out what, what creates you as a character and you as a self and you know, how is that functional and how is that dysfunctional? And if you just tune in and you're listening to clean radio, let's get to a couple calls because we got them lining up. Let's go to our old friend, Amy from Vancouver. How are you, Amy? Welcome back to clean radio. I'm doing fine. Thanks. And how are you doing with the selfies? I know you've been taking a lot of them. I've never done one. <laughs> doing one right now. <laughs> I've never, I've never done one. I've oh. never been in one. <laughs> it's never too late to start. <laughs> we're all I, about, um, we're all about change here. <laughs> you know, I think in in some ways, selfies um, as a group, they can be really fun. Like a group you know, of people, but then right? It's not a friends. selfie. But then, then, it, then it's a groupie. Okay, then it's groupie. Okay. I right? guess. I don't know. Yeah. This is a selfie yeah. self. That's so fantastic. Yeah. The word self. Yeah, but yeah. they say selfies with other people, like like the selfie with you Obama. That, that picture of the guys in the caught in a big traffic jam here in L.A., and everybody was getting out of their cars, groups of 20, 30 people, all of them taking a picture of each other together. I thought that was a good it's, it's a bonding experience. Yes. Yes. There was a traffic jam in China. It was like, lasted 11 days. I'm like, where did they go to the bathroom? Like, uh, where did they eat? Probably the same place they always do. A lot of selfies. Yeah. Well, and, you know, I think um, in some ways, I mean, I feel that it's kind of a cry out for help in a way. Um, I agree with you a million percent. Yeah, it's people you know? looking for validation yes. about yeah. themselves yeah. that they can't right. get from themselves or, the, right. or is missing in their life. You know what? You're completely right, Amy. That's a great, astute point. And you know what we're going to start doing? Although we'll I just... have to say there is another extreme, and that is that really narcissistic extreme where people are so self-involved and so mm-hmm. in love with themselves mm-hmm. um, that they're just doing it purely to try and get attention and show other people that, you know, how important they are. So... There, there's different responses, not everything. Either one of those <laughs> either, either is one not is a good, good option. Yeah, one of the, either one of those two. Either you're doing it because of one or you're doing it because of, you're not doing well. So maybe that's a good point. If somebody, the next time you see a selfie, I want you to call them up and say, say what's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? Are, are you, you okay? okay? Are you narcissistic? Yeah. Is, or you just need someone to talk it's to? It's going to be okay. <laughs> Amy and John, Amy's a regular call, and she's, had a, 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 she's done amazingly well. She's an amazing success story in the last year. She's worked on herself. She's a victim of why, abuse. Too. Why? Have you ever been to Vancouver? <laughs> 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 and uh, we just lost our thousand listeners in, in Vancouver. Vancouver. <laughs> uh, John Savage will be flying down Clean tomorrow. Radio loves Apologies. Vancouver. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Actually, the best, best, best programs and the best people I've met uh, were inspiring to me yeah. for uh, working on my sobriety. It was Vancouver and mm-hmm. uh, Washington or? Both. Okay. Both. That northwest uh, misty, rainy, but very mellow kind of just atmosphere. and uh, soggy, Vancouver. soggy, rainy people are, are pretty influential. Well, guess, the like skin people. is beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> and Amy, uh, John uh, secretly asked if you could take a selfie and email it to us. Yeah. Um, and uh, that's for a whole We're going to start other selling show. them on, the, on our website. Amy, so how are you doing? I, I love hearing you laugh. I mean, I really do. It's one of my favorite things is when you call in because people that don't know, Amy's is a victim of abuse. And she's really been through the ringer, and you and know her tone is so much better than it was it's, months it's, ago. It's, it's amazing. Like a different person. It's it's absolutely amazing, and it really makes me happy. You know, I think um, part of my smiling. laughter comes part of my laughter comes from the fact that uh, I've kind of taken the bull by the horns and um, decided, you know, quite a while ago, not to be a victim anymore, and basically just kind of 
turn things around and the people that come into my life, um, the ones that never took the, t the time for me or made the time for me, um, I've, I've taken that extra uh, step in my recovery to, to make and take the time for others uh, to listen to their issues uh, and try to give them hope for the things that, you know, um, I never thought would happen to me, never thought that would affect my life, um, even though the little things were the, the, the major things that affected my life, but for change. But um, lately, I've been, uh, it's, it's amazing, uh, little, little tiny things, people come my way, and I've been making the time to listen more than say anything to whatever they have to say and just validate what what's going through their heart and just you know uh i guess the the, the the biggest thing in my life was validation and i've just been taking the time and that's kind of been what has been helping me to laugh <laughs> um i'm actually um a pretty witty person and so laughter and uh, humor in my life has always been number one that's great. And Amy, you really sound great. And I really beg of you, I want you to take a selfie and email it to Andrew and I. Because and, we want to know what our fans look like. And, um, oh and uh, you, you know, is he, I, I, you just begged for a selfie on the air. Is that even legal? I did because she's against it. She's she's right. never done it. And so for Amy, that's it's, like it's you're, you're going to be her first selfie. Yeah. Like, no, wow. I'm not her first selfie. She's her first selfie. Oh, well, I'm the first person the she's first sending it to. Of her and her selfie. That, that selfie, whole selfie thing is positive in yeah. that sense. I mean, she's she's take. It's like the basic training they don't give you in the military. The basic training to work on yourself and to be have the tools when you feel like the world is. Doesn't the military though kind of not want you to be yourself? They try to make you something else, right? Well, that I, inner I, that I inner think strength. A, I think a selfie should be self betterment, not it, not a picture. But the better right. the yeah, better you're just trying to get out you're of it. You're talking yeah. about the better you're talking about was like giving yourself the love to let things go. Mm -hmm. Because you do have important issues. You do have stuff that when you're tired, hungry, whatever, is going to hit you. And you're going to have tears come out. You don't even know why sometimes. It's just in you because you, you're a human being. The human being part that you are practicing and building a strength and tools for is something we don't really have. That's right. And you, by doing this, what you're doing is people get it. From you, right. yeah. by you it's not, being it's not there. Textbook knowledge. It's 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 living it every day and being able to share my life rather than just telling what somebody else said or what an instructor taught me. Um, hmm. I can share my life. Yeah, you know, people don't grow up and say, "Hey, I want to be an alcoholic. Hey, I want to be a drug addict. Hey, I want to be molested. I want to be, you know, beaten mm -hmm. by my spouse." You know, this isn't things that people want right. to have happen. And obviously, you know, you're not, you don't go to elementary school and they say, "Okay, when you get beaten by your spouse, this is what you're supposed to do." So, and then you feel like if things like that happen to you, then you're like, "Wow, is there something about me that's wrong that this is happening to me?" And nobody else seems to even be talking about it. So when you actually get to the point where you're getting healthier and then you realize that, oh, actually, it wasn't really my fault and that there's more that I can do to help myself. And in doing that, I can also share my story and help other people realize that they don't have to sit there and beat themselves up about it, but that there is hope on the other side. And that's really one of the main reasons we started this show was to show that people, not just helping people that are addicted or have problems and helping them with their problems here and now and having the ability to call and get advice and help, but also to show people like you, Amy, who have done well and now are giving back. Amy, we got nothing but love for you, but we got to run. <laughs> and um, yeah, I, thank you, Amy. yeah, I expect. You know, you know what? I'm I'm totally joking, Amy. You know what the greatest selfie of all is? I don't know. Um, but Amy, 
I thought I was going to say something funny, but we will talk Another to you later. Another Judaism right there. Yeah, we need, I, we need I, to get I, that I one tried. Right. Amy, <laughs> I'll talk to you later. You're supposed to have the thought in your head before you say it, Judah. Have a great week. <laughs> I don't think of the comeback next week. Okay. okay. <laughs> Bye-bye. And if you just tuned in, you're listening to Clean Radio. That was Amy. And uh, I was about to say something like the greatest selfie of all is you doing okay. But I realize it doesn't make a lot of sense. It's you know. perfect. Yeah, it's perfect. Thank you, John Savage. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so Amy, the greatest <laughs> selfie the, of all. It's the trouble with all yeah. of us with have, are so smart. Yeah. That we just cannot come up with the most brilliant thing. <laughs> it has to be better than what we just... That's yeah, not that applying... Was, thank you very yeah. much. It's very kind of you. And let's get to another call. We got Heather in Vermont. Heather. Howdy. Howdy to you. Howdy. I am doing pretty wonderful. John, are you okay with this? Vermont? Oh, my God. <laughs> I, yeah, I'm a Middlebury guy. Or Oh, my mother went to Middlebury. Well, I'm, uh, my family is uh, just below Middlebury in, what is it called? And I forgot that area, that town. Lowberry. Yeah. Lowberry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, Underberry. <laughs> Underberry, yeah. Yes. All my family and cousins and everybody up there, God bless you. Yeah. Yeah. And anyway, actually, you know, I went to an uh, area AA convention this past weekend, and there was a guy named John who looked like you, John. <laughs> Where was this? At a it, 12th, it at an AA, AA, AA convention. In Vermont. Oh, lovely. I'm glad their meeting's going on up there. They're going through a little bit of crap up north. There's a lot of heroin up there now. Yeah. Oh, yeah, there is. I mean, somebody was found, you know, with bags and bags of heroin, and they had it under the seat where their kids were. You know? uh, oh, like, that's, oh, that's lovely. Yeah, yeah. So I know it's been like an eight hundred percent increase in like uh, prescription drug use in Vermont. Or yeah, it's horrible. Yeah. yeah, we've had a few major uh, news stories with deaths, and uh, I got a call from friends in before the major star died. My um, one of my people I've admired was that the oh my God, John, the heroin here has now got cut with something that. Uh, Fifty people died today yeah. from the cut yeah. of the medic, the, the drug that was cut into the heroin or something. Yeah. So, you know, um, in a way, I'd like to see all the drugs legalized and make it a part of our country's uh, responsibility to deal with alcohol and drug abuse and, uh, you know, people getting a little more wise. I think the mystery and the mystique is part of the problem. I it's actually like, it's really like agree guns. with that. Like Andrew, a hundred percent agrees with you. I, I mean, I, be, I yeah. you know, it's, you know, I deal with people all the time with substance abuse problems, and I see the havoc it wreaks in the ERs and in the jails and and in the prisons and everything. But um, at the same point, uh, denying that something is exists and is out there and readily right. available is like having your head in the sand. You're much better to, as a culture, adopt. And when you and put it in the in. dark, and when it's yeah. a dark thing, and it's no. got to be kept and away taboo. from the people that might see you, and out of the light, and everything else, that's where depressed people go. Yeah, and a lot that's of where the, people who need something. And most of go. these overdoses, when people once yeah. they get addicted, happen from mixing su different substances together, or like you said, there's something cut into the drug and they don't know, and that's how they overdose and die, right. or they get very sick from the stuff that's in there. Like pure heroin actually is not. If you use pure heroin, it won't make you sick, like the stuff that's in it. Like when you see heroin addicts on the street and they look terrible, that's, well, one, is from not taking care of themselves. But two, it's from all the other garbage they're shooting into their veins well, besides I the heroin. I've seen so. heroin addicts who are doing the good stuff, right? <laughs> and they are, nobody knows they're doing it, boy. They're just so sure they're okay. And are, yeah. Bullshit. Yeah. Heather, you had a quick yeah. question <laughs> for Andrew? Yeah, yeah. Completely Andrew. obvious. If you're on a drug, like well, heroin. it's the same thing with the people that drink vodka, thinking yeah. it doesn't make them smell. No, you smell. Yeah, you're, really. we, we might. You're the only one that doesn't know how bad you smell. <laughs> All of us smell it. Yeah. I don't know when that myth came up that you could drink vodka and it doesn't smell. And and beer didn't yeah. make you drunk. I, I think yeah. Stoli came out with that. Yeah, it was Stoli, right? It was the Patron Company, yeah, right? right? You know, well, that's together. At the end, you yeah. know, uh, you know, my my drink of choice was peppermint schnapps because I like to get drunk and have fresh breath at the same time. Oh, there, there you go. You know, it's. can I tell you something? I, but I'm just, Heather, I, that's funny, but I got to tell you something. I was actually in rehab with a guy when I was, it was probably 16, 17 years ago, and he relapsed on Scope or Listerine. Listerine, yeah. And he, he managed 10 bars on the islands. 
uh, you know, St. Croix, one of those. But he relapsed <laughs> on because he thought nobody's going to, you know, he did, it was it, all the rationales that went on in his head to drink this Listerine. It was so, it was so beautiful. It was, it was listening to his alcoholic mind, convince, <laughs> you know what I mean? Convince himself. <laughs> somehow that this wasn't this, really this, this wasn't really drinking and it was okay. <laughs> Heather, you have a question. Can we save that yeah. question for next week because we're lining up with calls or do you want to take it right now? Um, I, I, well, I could hang up after I ask the question. Then okay, go for, it. That's great. go for it. Go for it. Have you used, uh, Andrew, have you had clients who use biofeedback? Because I actually have been doing like a biofeedback game, and it's one of the reasons I'm sort of like doing better. Yeah, you know, I think that uh, biofeedback, anything that gives you more self-awareness about your body and what's going on and, and can change uh, the way you think, and then how, whether you have good reality testing or bad reality testing, um, they can be especially effective with people that have anxiety um, or ruminating thoughts of depression. So um, I think it's a very useful tool, but it's only one of many tools that should be combined together in a healthy treatment uh, plan. And if you just tuned in, you're listening to Clean Radio. We're with uh, John Savage um, and Andrew Spanswick. Uh, let's get, I want to get to, oh, she called, just, I want to get to Jessica. She's calling from Albany. Jessica, everything all right? Yeah, everything's great. Okay. Um, what's going on? Well, I just tuned in. I was on my Facebook, and I seen you guys had a live stream. And so I just wanted to tune in and join the conversation and um, find out what was going on with it, fellow users or, or non-users, actually. Is this Albany, New York? Yes, it is. Hey, yeah. I want to, yeah, like, well. cheering. Hey, first of all, Andrew lives is from very close. You're from Ithaca. I, I, I spent some time in Albany yeah. at, uh, on Lark Street. There was oh, yep, yep. Yeah. Right around the corner from there, actually. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Lark Street uh, had a lot of live bands in the 80s. And yeah, lot, they still uh, do it once in a while. Oh, yeah? You know, it's yeah. interesting, though. I love what you called about, because you said, you know, you told the call screener it's been a struggle, but you're getting it through it daily. And yeah. I love that because it's, it is a struggle. You know, getting sober, staying sober can be a struggle. Mm -hmm. And we're not going to lie to people out there and say <laughs> it's not. That, because that was a favorite phrase of mine that I heard in South Africa, uh, in the African uh, black community. Um, which is large, and there's many nations there, and there's just all kinds of mixed race, too, and other stuff going on. Life's a struggle, man. <laughs> Yo, yeah. lick -a, lick -a, it's a beautiful lick -a. struggle, though. Yeah, it, it is. is. And that's it the is, journey. Yeah. That's the, that's the, this, the, I love that you're saying, I love that you're calling him because we can't say to people out there, getting sober is one of the hardest things in the world, one of the hardest things in the world to do. And most people relapse or whatever it is a lot of times because the struggle gets so hard that yeah. it was easier in a sense sometimes. The drinking was easier. Or they thought it was. Yeah, or they, they thought it was easier. They thought so because right. you were numb to it. So That's you weren't really actually paying attention to what was really going on around you. So now that you're able to look at everything from from a, a sober standpoint it's a lot i mean you get to feel it more what, what do you think is the most important thing you've gotten from sobriety the most important thing i've gotten from sobriety is definitely i've gotten my family back i've gotten the trust back i, I feel better about myself that's great. I have more clarity out of life as well. Oh, that's great. That's great. And I love that, you know, and I love that you're calling from Albany, New York. Yeah, you thanks for finding us on Facebook yeah, and listening to our live stream. I want yeah, you to I've seen it, and uh, I appreciate you guys definitely. Yeah, Judah's the one with blonde hair and, um, <laughs> and brown hair. I blonde, brown hair. And he's the one with hair. Yeah, I'm that's the one with hair. And no, John Savage is in tonight, and he's got an amazing head of hair for being so young and 40, you know. And uh, I, Jessica, I love, I love that you're uh, spreading the message. And please spread the message of Clean Radio in Albany, New York. Definitely. And, and please go, go on Facebook, like us, post so we know who you are, and uh, call back anytime. Not a problem. Thank you so I much, sure Jessica. Will. Have a good night. You too. Okay. Um, I love that. And I love that Jessica's calling from Albany, talking about the struggle. But it's okay for, to struggle. Yeah. When did it be? It, it, we live in a society, you know, you know one of my friends well, said. Well, the society of quick fixes. Right. And yeah. one of my fr friends said to me, I was having a really rough time in early sobriety when I first got sober. I go, and I'm not having fun. And he goes, before you started drinking, did you think life was supposed to be fun? You know, I was miserable, and, you know, and that's why I found drinking. And all of a sudden I got sober and I thought every day should be fun. Well, we can become, uh, whatever you want to call it, addicted to being unhappy. I wouldn't know anybody like that. <laughs> but just my sense of my environment when I was a kid and things that I just sort of picked up on. And I was quiet. I liked to read. I was, you know, and little by little, I didn't think I was right. Something just I wasn't 
able to fit. And it became a poor me. Yeah. And poor me. Poor me. Poor me. Poor me. Another drink. <laughs> Thank <Poor> you. Man. <laughs> and there's that difficult area of just being who you are, which yeah. we may get confused about. But for me, confusion is a grace. You know, I it's think you're totally right. It's the first step towards surrendering to a power greater than ourselves that loves us all the time. And we can admit we make mistakes and we can forgive ourselves. And we do make mistakes. Or we make we make choices that may be inappropriate until we find out later that, oh, my God, I really screwed up. But I think this this thinking process, when we realize it, we are off the track to be able to give it up for a while and say, oof, you know, I think I, I really, not only did I F up, but I really feel f up and I really feel I need somebody to help me. I'm going to call my best drug dealer. No, <laughs> I'm going to call somebody that can understand this. Right. And that's it. And you're you're just listening to the people uh, on the show. And your show, I think, is great. You can tell John was really famous because he had multiple drug dealers. Like he didn't just have like <laughs> the one. He, he's like he's like I've got quality like you know one through ten, and then I can pick. I have been so lucky in so many ways my whole life since I was in day one. I've been lucky, you know. And I keep keep just being uh, grateful that it's I haven't completely messed up when you really first got famous did it did it check like what did how did that change your life I started talking a lot <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. I want to we're running out of time quickly I want to get to I want to get a couple last calls let's go to Levance how you doing in Cleveland Ohio hey gentlemen how are you how are you good how, Good. Are you? how are you? welcome back yes yes um we uh, did get permanent custody of the kids on last week. Okay, so last week he was you were in court for your brother, your sister? My brother's two kids. Your brother's yes. two kids. Um, and it's an amazing story, John, actually. Uh, you know, LeVance, you have your own kids? Or um, yeah. You, well, you were, well, my kids are grown now. Right, my kids and, are grown. And one of the gifts of his sobriety is that his brother, his brother's kids who... You know, with addiction and all that stuff that John, that LeVance has gotten to step in. And because he's sober, he's almost got to repair your past. Well, he's, yeah. 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 So help me out. So that's yeah, great. I Congratulations. To, uh, I, I get, yeah, I get to play catch up. And uh, Cleveland is where, I don't know if you guys have seen on the news, where they've been mis mixing the heroin with fentanyl here. And right. people have been overdosing, overdosing, and, you know, um, and not only in Cuyahoga County, which is the county Cleveland's located in, but surrounding areas. And so they said overdoses have quadrupled. Um, in the first three months of this year. Wow. Um, it was actually um, you know, it was actually in Canada that they moved more towards a public health model where they actually supplied needles in shooting galleries um, for really? people that were on heroin because there were so many deaths in this one calendar year from a really high batch dose of um, heroin. And fentanyl is an opiate. It's a synthetic opiate. That's, right. Um, but it's very strong. It's used for cancer victims, and it's normally put right, in things like right. lollipops and stuff like that. So when people right, are dying... Right. And they can't swallow something; they can just suck on it. But um, anyway, so I love how uh, you say. I love it is because I've just seen recently somebody that is majorly addicted to that, right? And it's we call it a lollipop. <laughs> well, because it's on a lollipop, right? Yeah. I mean, it's it's, it's there's patches too. There's transdermal it's, patches. It's insane. So. But it was they're, they're yeah. very useful drugs say, that were created for cancer. But you know, the, unfortunately, they get mixed into you know illegal drugs, and there's no dosage or regulation on illegal drugs, so. People overdose, but so in Canada. Well, the thing about it, we have to realize that the healthcare professionals that have access to it are also becoming addicted, and that's how those opiates and those drugs are making it out of the hospital into the community. Right. There's, know, a, there's a there's a real medicine. problem with that, and what's more criminal than that even is the fact that. That most states have stopped what were called diversion programs, where if a nurse mm -hmm. or a doctor right. developed a problem with addiction, they would be able to right. go and get help without losing their license. And now right. states have reversed that, and they're not providing those programs anymore. So it keeps them, you know, hidden, and they have to hide their addiction, and then just causes more and more problems. Levance, we're running out yeah. of time, but what was your comment? All right, well, God, God bless you guys. What was I'll your, talk what to was you your comment week? about selfies? I'm interested. Well, well, you know what? Um, uh, you guys kind of stole my thunder on that because I was saying, you know... That's what Andrew I and I are selfies. known as, by the way. We're known as thunder stealers. <laughs> yeah. I, I felt it was narcissistic for yeah. me to keep taking pictures of myself. Then you think about the people that do take selfies. 
if you're on Twitter or Facebook and you have 3,000 friends, don't you think somebody else would want to take a picture of you? <laughs> <laughs> and with that, that's amazing. The great point, Levance, cool. will speak you to you next 3, week. You have 3,000 friends and you can't get anyone to that's take a picture That's actually hysterical. You, <laughs> you have 3,000 friends and you need to take your own picture. Think about uh, that. That's that Levance so from Cleveland, Ohio. That sums actually, up the Facebook generation that's, that's right there. That's amazing. Right? That's, that's like, actually a great point. Right? I'm going to steal that, Levance. Okay? I'm cutting <laughs> that from our YouTube and I'm seems, using that as my own. It seems to me in a way like that there may also be, you know, because I'm a little older, it may just be like better in a way in, in a way it's taking taking a, a, a record of your day of your time like a diary of yourself right. and giving yourself that reflection in that environment back to be okay at that moment right and you know we keep diaries we do stuff i love photographs i got boxes but you don't years. post them that's the difference you don't yeah, post you're not your diary. sending them out for validation right. from yeah, your three thousand friends that you don't great. even know Listen, we're running out of time i just want to get you have 15 seconds todd right. i, I yeah. was worried about you last week how are you I'm doing all right. Wow, you uh, sound really good. That wow. was like that was. <laughs> you're impressed with the quality I'm of the phone today. <laughs> he obviously he has he has his best He's nurse upgraded. on the chain. Though. Todd, how are you? I'm doing really good. Um, the the nurse only lets me have 15 minutes of access to the good phone. Oh, okay. <laughs> so that's my story. Okay, Todd. For those who don't know, Todd next is in. Next week, the second I see your call, I'm going to take you right away. Okay. Okay. I will talk to you next week. Oh, okay. let me say hi. To, to yeah, say hi to John. Say hi. Hey, um, hi, I'm Todd. Dutch. I'm Dutch too. Oh, God bless you. And he can't tell me much. Yeah. <laughs> John, oh, you must be a Virgo too. Todd, talk to you later. <laughs> okay. Um, All right, Todd. Take care. And I would really want to thank John Savage again. Um, you're an extremely interesting man. Thank you. And uh, it's great when we have a guest on Andrew that actually makes us think. Yeah, I'd like to see you think, Judah. And uh, I know, because it hurts. <laughs> and um, I want to thank everybody out there. Everybody, I want to thank Monique Moss, one of the best publicists in the greater Los Angeles area, and all of America. Monique all Moss, of America. integrated PR. I want to thank everybody that helps put the show on together. Our, go to clean, Facebook.com slash clean radio. Go to cleanradio.com. Check out our new website. Discussion continues at cleanradio.com. Don't let addiction to drugs or alcohol steal another year of your life. Clean Treatment Center provides world-class addiction assistance that also treats the underlying causes and provides vital aftercare so people can get clean and stay clean. Live, kind, professional help is standing by to provide immediate assistance or to simply answer questions and provide guidance. If you or someone you care about is suffering from addiction, take action now and make 2014 the best year of your life with Clean Treatment Center. 